All right, so you'll have this base piece is the actual top piece for the uh, for the pick and place machine. This is where the the reels will be passing, or the actual tape of the reels will be passing. Uh, this is a sunken area or pocketed area for the PCBs. You'll have a part that looks like this for the uh, Y-axis um, bearing holder for the rails, the V-groove bearing holder. And it also connects to the uh, the bridge of the, the gantry. Um, the one for the outside, these are for the adjustable V-groove bearings. You'll have an X or I'm sorry, a Y-axis motor mount that will have uh, a place for two bearings. The Z-axis um, nut holder which will be the one going up and down, and it will be placed with the Z-axis rail support. This is this is for the V-groove bearings for the Z-axis. This is a motor mount for the um, X-axis that will go um, left and right on the bridge. This is the um, X and Z plate. We'll have spaces for V-groove bearings and adjustable V-groove bearings. This is two structural parts that goes underneath the, uh, the x-axis rail support for the, for the bridge of the gantry. This is the uh, computer and electronics mounting board, which will sit underneath uh, the, the pick-and-place machine. This is a portion of the pick-and-place machine that will accept uh, or um, receive the, uh, the reels, uh, the used reels underneath. And this is just a, a way to, to keep it from going into the electronics. Okay, so you'll see these L-shaped pieces. These are actually the sides that will be mounted in various locations on the, the electronics board. And they'll be in like, um, they'll be mounted in, in such a way that they'll provide the sides for the, so that will go like right there. Um, you'll have four of these. You'll have four of the other piece that goes in this location. You'll have four of these parts. It has a um, two short uh, sides here. Same thing with this one, but this one has a slightly lar um, longer side. And you'll have a piece that looks like this. All of these would have four each. And then you'll have um, four of these pieces that will actually work with uh, these pieces to, to receive the reels. Optionally, that uh, what will be available is, is, a, is a carcass for a cabinet underneath. And this is for um, pieces that would slide in, uh, generally just uh, standard three-quarter inch boards that, that would be routed out pockets to receive PCB boards. Okay, and this is what it would look like. It's something that's routed out that would receive, um, that would receive boards like this at their correct sides, but sizes, but we wouldn't actually do that. This is something that would have to be done by the, uh, by the end user of the pick and place machine. So this is one side of the cabinet. This is another side of the cabinet. This is the shorter of the two. This is the back of these two cabinets. This is the side of one of the cabinets. It's a, it's a more narrow side. This is another back that is used to um, position for this, this side. Note the whole location so you know that you have that part. This is the top of the carcass, and this is what the machine will be sitting on top of. This is the bottom of the carcass. These are two shelves for the uh, more narrow piece that will receive, or that is uh, intended for holding reels, just for storage. And there's a piece also that goes right here that keeps the reels in place. You'll also have two pieces that look like this. These will hold each end of the, um, of the timing belt. And you'll notice one is a little bit wider than the other. This is a little narrower, this is a little wider, and that's just for um, positioning. One part of the, the belt will be in a different position uh, with respect to the other one, so uh, these would have different sizes. And you'll have four of these pieces that will also serve as uh, some of the sides. Okay, we're gonna start off with the process of putting these number eight nut inserts into the, um, the computer electronics base. Turn the computer electronic space over onto its bottom so you see this pocketed area for the fan um, on top. And note the places that I put it into the board as I go.
going to try to get as vertical as possible when you're doing this. Maintain vertically so this, the screws that go in are not going to be angled when you put these in. The nuts that I'm putting in right now are for the motherboard. Now there are four in this location that is used to mount the breakout board. And you'll need the breakout board that has the relay on it. These are for the drivers, the stepping motor drivers. Okay, flip the structural piece with the electronics over so you don't see the, the pocket here. And we're going to need four spacers and we're going to insert them into these four holes. We're going to take the breakout board and we're going to go ahead and screw down the breakout board with four of the number eight screws at one inch in length. And note the orientation of the breakout board. It's the parallel port is on the side of the motherboard, the motherboard is going to be here. And all of these uh, terminals are um, located somewhat in, uh, in respect with the, um, the drivers. So just insert them into the four holes. And these will be a little bit big for the holes, but they'll work still. Take a Phillips head screwdriver and or a flat head if that's all you have. And you don't want to screw them out all the way yet, just to get them down. Just get them started a little bit, and then you can screw them all down just to make sure they all align properly. I wouldn't suggest using um, a driver for this, since you don't want to over tighten these screws. So now you have access to this. Um, now we're going to put the motherboard on. You'll need seven spacers um, for the motherboard. We're going to lift the motherboard up just a little bit off of this substrate. You're putting it into these locations that you see here. So these are the main locations. You're not going to be using any of these holes here for the, uh, for the motherboard. This is for different types of motherboards. If you do get a motherboard that does use this, you will need to insert the number eight um, nut insert and you'll have to use these spaces in those locations. But these holes represent the, the generic motherboard uh, template. Uh, the motherboard that we're going to be using here is a, a micro ATX motherboard. This is the only one that, the only type that will fit here because you'll have a, a hard drive in this location. Okay, so this is the motherboard, this is the micro ATX motherboard, uh, this is the CPU. This is, these are the components that will be uh, your interface to uh, the, uh, the monitor and the internet, and whatever else, and USB ports. You're going to match the locations of these holes. You'll need seven number eight screws at one inch in length. And just go ahead and put it into the holes that you aligned with the spacers. And just like the breakout board, only put them in there just a little bit to not quite, not quite grab it when it gets down to the point where it's about to start. Just so there's a little bit of wiggle room once you start dropping these things in. Okay, now start driving them in a little bit at a time for each one so you ensure that they're going to be able to get started before you tighten them in and down. It's a good test to determine if our CNC machine is well calibrated because all of these holes are very, very tight. This is not posing any problem at all. Uh, 
Okay, now the hard drive will be going into this location. Underneath the table you'll have four counter board holes. And on the bottom of the hard drive you have four screw locations. Try not to touch any of the um, circuit. And if you um, really care to, you can wear wrist guards for static electricity. Place it here and then put in the screws underneath. Okay, you'll need number six screws. The length of these screws can be five eighths or three quarters of an inch. Um, you'll use a number eight washer. You're going to go underneath because you want to keep this on top and, and be as safe as possible since these are very uh, susceptible to damage if, uh, if any shock, physical shock, were to be put on them. So you're going to put it underneath into this hole. Then find the hole on the hard drive. Maybe a little tricky. Yeah, we'll go ahead and screw this in. <coughs> now that you've got one in and it's pretty secure, you can go ahead and um, lift this up and get the rest of them done underneath. Lightly set it down because you're putting it on the, the motherboard. You might want to maybe a cushion or something underneath that doesn't have a static charge. You don't have to tighten them all the way yet because you want to make sure that they're aligned properly. So since you do have a little bit of adjustment here. Now that they're all in, you can go ahead and tighten them. You don't want to over tighten them to strip them, just tighten them enough to know that they're pretty snug. I'm going to lift it up again. Be very careful that even shock will damage this hard drive while you're maneuvering this piece.